Guys, in this video, we have a new toy. And this is an Alliant T-Rex 600 Nitro Helicopter. And if you don't know what one of those are, it's one of these things here. And it's in kit form, so we have gotta build it. So that's what we're gonna do in this video. Do you wanna get rich quick? Then buy a lottery ticket and hope for the best. If you want to get rich for sure, you have to provide either a product or service of value. I've spent the past 10 years of my life trying many different ways of making money online. And by far, the quickest and easiest way that I have found is by selling on eBay. And I've helped hundreds of people make thousands of dollars every single month. So if you want more money so you can buy more toys, buy a nice house, or quit that dreaded nine till five, then click the link down below and I'll show you how. So most of the content on this channel up until this point has been mainly RC cars. But this is not a dedicated RC car channel. So from time to time, you're gonna get other videos. The whole idea of this channel here is to share with you guys any hobbies and interests that I have at any given time. And my hobbies always change. Sometimes it's RC cars, sometimes it's supercars, sometimes it's, it's off-roading, monster trucks. Today, it's helicopters. But don't worry, my RC cars aren't going anywhere, so there's still gonna be plenty of RC car videos on this channel. Anywho, that's enough waffle, so let's crack him open. <laughs> oh, that's what it's gonna look like. So here we have the main frame assembly, here we have the rotor head assembly, and here we have the electronics package. Now I went for the super combo, which means it comes with servos, engine, and a few other bits and bobs. So separately I had to buy myself a radio, and this is the latest Spectrum DX8, an MSH Brain 2 fly system, and the Align Starter. Man, check out this body. That just looks so good. It almost looks too good to use. And I'm pretty sure if you crash it, this thing is gonna be completely destroyed. So when I start doing all my crazy stunts really low to the floor, I wanna see if I can get myself one of these plastic canopies. This looks like it's made out of the same material as those Russian indestructible bodies. And I had something similar on my Thunder Tiger Raptor many years ago, and when you crash it, it kinda just bends and you can just kinda pop it back out. This here is an old car show, Calibre 30, by the way. And what we're gonna do with that, we're gonna get it flying, and then we're gonna do some stunts with it, jump past the cars over the top of it, and it's probably gonna end up in a whole load of carnage. So this is not gonna be a detailed build. I will show you a few little bits here and there, do a few time lapses, and then we'll see it all when it's all put together at the end. So section one, we have gotta start with the rotor head, which all these parts here. And by the way, I am not an expert, so we're just gonna try and put it together, we're gonna try and wing it, and hopefully the thing's gonna fly. <laughs> Last more than 30 seconds. <laughs> Result, the rotor head is already assembled, but I'm quickly going to go over it all just to make sure that all these screws here are locked tight together. If one screw comes out of a helicopter, it's probably going to be game over. And the worst one to come out is actually this screw that's in here. If that screw comes out, both blades are going to shoot straight out, and if that hits you, it's going to hurt. Oh! Good job I checked guys, because these are only finger tight in there. So I'm going to be using this Loctite 270 for most of the parts. This is actually stud lock and it's super, super strong and it shouldn't come out. Now it can be a bit of a pain in the butt to get this out again later on, but I'd rather it didn't fall apart in mid-flight and have to struggle a little bit in the shop. But all you got to do to get this off is to apply a little bit of heat and it will come straight out anyway. So on these smaller M3 screws, I'm going to use some medium strength Loctite because these here are actually going into a plastic component and I don't want to apply heat to this part and ruin these plastic bits if I have to ever get them out again. So next we've got to remove the feathering spindle and the feathering spindle is this shaft here. When you crash that always bends as I have found out in the past. So inside here we have a thrust bearing and it's very important that we grease that up. And in the book it just says grease. So I'm just going to use this because this is what I have. So now I've got to do the same to this side and then we're going to assemble it all again. So now that that's done, I'm going to go ahead and put the Loctite directly into the thread here. Because if I put the Loctite onto the actual screw, then we may contaminate the thrust bearing, what's in there, and it's all going to seize up and then it's going to fly crappy. And this is the one bolt, the one area, guys, where I'm going to probably put a little bit too much Loctite on there. I know it's going to be a pig to get this out again one day, but as I said before, guys, I would rather struggle in the shop then for this to fly out when I'm flying, and it's gonna, well, could kill someone. So now that I've got it all back assembled again, we've got to make sure that this is very, very tight. 
and I'm going to be checking these screws over and over over the course of the first few flights and then as time goes on and I'm more confident with it then it's going to be checked less often. So next we've got the main shaft, swash plate on top of there, then head on top of that, Jesus bolt, nuttage, Oh, and this helicopter actually comes with two Jesus bolts. And I believe it's called a Jesus bolt is because if this bolt comes out, the whole rotor head just flies off and you're probably left there saying, Jesus. Now on these two, we don't need any Loctite because it's got an eye lock. And I actually like the idea of having two bolts in here because on my last helicopter, the top of the rotor head was actually quite wobbly. So next we've got to install a couple of ball links and a useful tool for that are these ball link pliers there. Because all you do is slide it in, Boom, because otherwise you've got to struggle doing it like this. Ugh. Much easier. So next, we've got to assemble these links. So these are actually a turnbuckle, which means there's a left and a right hand thread. So once it is fitted, you can adjust the length of it just by turning this nut here. So to start off with, I like to make sure that we've got the same amount of thread roughly showing on both sides. Then install it with the little A on there on the outside. So I've noticed that these links are slightly a little bit on the stiff side, which probably doesn't matter too much, but the smoother that you can make the whole assembly, the nicer the helicopter's gonna fly. So I've got this little ball joint reamer tool here, and you basically just got a screw in the end there, you adjust this uh, to make this bigger or smaller, and then you just shove it in the hole, turn it around a few times until it goes a bit easier, clip it on, and ah, look, it's still tight. So we need to go ahead and carry on and keep doing it, until it's on there nice and smoothly. Beautiful. So next we've got to adjust the length of these and it's got to be 22.5 millimeters on the inside. Yeah, little way to go. Boom. And you want to make sure that you get both of these links as close as possible to the same measurement because if you get these a little bit out, then your blade tracking is going to be out. We're going to talk more about that later. So next, we've got to assemble the main drive gear assembly, and luckily that's already done. I just made sure that these screws are tight. And then next, we've got the transmission, and this is also assembled, but I'm going to go over it all, put some extra oil in the bearings, put some extra grease on the gears, and make sure that it's all locked tight. I did see a video on YouTube of some dude flying this, and this all overheated in there, and it melted, and then he crashed his heli. So next, we've got to install these tiny little magnets into the flywheel, and these are for the governor, which is what keeps the engine RPM at a set level. So I'm just going to go and put a little dollop of super glue in there just to hold them in place. And we have to make sure that we put one magnet in with north facing up and the other one with south facing up. And you can tell that because they put a little red dot on there. So on one side, you want the red dot up, on the other side, red dot down. So next, we've got to assemble the side frame. So I've just ran a little bit of super glue, CA glue, around all the edges because I don't like carbon fiber splinters. And also, it protects cables from scraping. And some people go over the top with this and they sand it and polish it and make it look really nice. I've made a bit of a pig's ear of it. I've got a bit of mess on the side of it. And these are probably not going to last that long anyway. Probably a couple of crashes are going to be smashed to pieces anyway. So I've got all the parts laid out on a bench here that need to go on there. I'm not going to bother filming it because it's going to spend more time me looking at the instruction book than there is actually doing anything and you lot are going to get bored so I'm going to do this stage here I'm probably going to do this stage this stage get the frame assembled and then we're going to get you back on when we get to the engine or if there's something good to show you Oh, right, so this is how far we've got with the frame so far. I've left all the screws loose at the moment until I get everything on it, because if you start doing screws up and the frame's a little bit tweaked, then you're going to struggle getting other screws in. So next we're going to put the engine in, and I'm pleasantly surprised that this is actually an OS engine, because usually these kits come with a Lion's own engine which is actually the same as an OS engine, but it's just nice that it's actually an OS branded engine. So next we've got to install the fan, Loctite. And I'm using the extra strong Loctite here because I don't want this to come loose and fall off because it's gonna cause a whole load of problems if it does. Bye bye engine.
All right, engine's in, and I've just temporarily put the tail gear box on there just so that all the holes line up perfectly. And now I'm going to go over it all, do up all the screws, and hopefully all the frame and everything's going to be nice and square. So next, we've got to install the head servos, and guys, check out these servos. They're fully metal cased, metal geared, and they really do look like some premium quality servos. They're high voltage, brushless. I mean, I'm guessing these are gonna be really good. And here we've got the tail servo. These ones are usually a lot faster, but slightly less torque. So next we've got to fit the servo horn, so I've plugged it into this servo tester I've got here, centred it up, and guys, these servos are so smooth, listen. It's like a Swiss watch. And the specs at high voltage, 23 kilos of torque, and 0 0.55 on the speed. Guys, that's fast, and this is only on little AA batteries. So I've just installed all the fuel tubing, and next we've got to assemble the tail rotor gearbox assembly, which is already assembled, but I've got to take it all apart and put Loctite in there, make sure everything's all nice and tight. All right, so that's all done, and luckily if we look over at the next page, that's all done also, and this looks pretty complicated. It's not really that bad. It looks worse on the picture than what it actually is. So next we can fit the tail rotor blades, assemble the boom, and that's going to be most of it starting to take shape. So when it comes to tightness wise on these blades, I like to just have it nipped up enough so it doesn't flap about, because if it flaps about you're going to start denting it as it hits the side there, and there's going to be a little bit of flop there, which is probably going to make it not fly that well. But at the same time you don't want it too tight, because otherwise the centrifugal force won't pull it out. So I'll just do them. So it just holds it up under its own weight. That'll do me anyway. And I know there's probably going to be a ton of you guys saying, no, 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 Kevin, you're doing it wrong. But guess what? It's my toy. I'll do it my way. I don't care. That's the great thing with this RC hobby. There's many different ways that you can do it. And the right way is whichever way puts the biggest smile on your face. And this way is what puts the biggest smile on my face. So for me, that's the right way. For you, maybe it isn't. So no. So next, we have the boom assembly. So we've got the rear gear box to go on there, the gear box that goes in the frame there. We've got the tail gear box that goes on the end there. We've got this bearing here that sits in the middle of the boom. We've got to lube it up and shove it down the end. And then we've got the torque tube here, which is pretty much just a great big long drive shaft that goes through the middle of the boom to drive the rear tail blades. And then we've got this linkage thingamajig here, which is what's going to control the pitch of the rear rotor blades. Guys, we are almost done. I've just got to assemble these links here to go from the swash plate up to the servos, fit the blades, and then we just got to set up the fly as controller, plug the satellites in, plug in, plug in all the servos, and then calibrate it, and then go fly it. Oh, an exhaust, regulator, a few bits and bobs to put onto the canopy, but guys, we're getting there. So we've got the exhaust on, we've got these links around the head all on. I've just fitted the regulator, basically what this is, you press the button on there and it gives power to the glow plug and it also gives, uh, it regulates the power down from the LiPo to a lesser voltage, I believe, to the fly bias unit. But because this has got high voltage servos, I think in future I'm going to modify it so that we're going to power it directly from the LiPo because more power, more speed, and more speed is always better. So next, let's have a look at the fly bias controller. Basically, this is what controls all the head and everything, and these have a massive effect on how well or how badly a helicopter flies. I've tried many different ones in my time, and this is my favourite so far, so that's what we're going to use. Oh, 
It's definitely grown a little bit since I last used to use these many years ago. Safety notes, radio controlled RC helicopters are not toys. Yeah, they are. Yes, oh no, they can be dangerous, but it is still a toy. If its only purpose is, is for enjoyment and to play with it, it's a toy. Tool, equipment, toy, 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 definitely toy, not a toy, not a toy, toy. So, so far, what I have found in this hobby is that those that say that these are not toys are usually way too serious for the hobby, don't know how to have fun, and in which case it's probably time to find a new hobby because, I mean, if you're not getting fun out of it, then why bother? Because there is absolutely no other purpose for this other than fun and playing with it. Toy, don't argue. <laughs> yeah, yeah, whatever. I guess they gotta put it in there just to cover their backs. And guys, it's nothing to be ashamed of, you know, being a fully grown man, still playing with toys. I mean, women, they've still got their toys, so let us have ours. We all need AA batteries for something. So the floor barless controller can sit nicely up on the top just here. By the way, if you're wondering what a fly bar is, it's this contraption here that companies use to put on model helicopters. It basically stabilizes the flight, but nowadays uh, we do it electronically. So it simplifies it a lot because it gets rid of all this mechanism, it gets rid of a load of links, it just makes the whole setup a lot cleaner and a lot nicer. And, uh, and they also fly a lot better. And also because it's a lot simpler, when you come to crashing, there's less parts, there's less parts to set up. It's just a cleaner setup all round. Oh. All right, so I've just spent the past couple of hours doing a little bit of wiring and messing about with it. Slight change of plan. I'm actually going to be running this unit on the full LiPo power. So I've soldered on a Dean's connector here. So we plug that into there. We get, we get a direct power feed straight into the fly barless unit. It's kind of like a receiver as well. Kind of all built in there. I mean, I'm running it on the... There they are. It was Spectrum satellites. So you plug two of those in there. So these are pretty much the little receivers. This is the control unit that controls all the servos. So now we've got a direct feed going from the battery straight into the unit. But then I've T-pieced sort of off of it. And we're going from that into the regulator here. So I can still use this as a glow starter. And I can also see on here the battery health. So that's handy too. But this unit now is no longer governing uh, the low voltage and all that malarkey. We're running full power, which means we can use these servos to the full potential, which is good. More power. It's better. So at the moment, I've just got to modify the governor cable because the wire that was on it was this one here. And this is made to plug into a micro beast. And because I'm running a brain, it uses a different plug. It uses a normal servo plug. So I'm going to solder this onto the end of that. And hopefully it's going to work. Maybe it won't. I don't know. If it doesn't, I'll have to buy a proper governor for this one here. So I'm going to carry on wiring this up. I'm going to tidy up all these cables, zip tie them all the way, get all the satellites mounted, get, the, get all the other wires on there. And then once we've got all that, I'll get you back on and show you the finished product. And then we're going to have to plug it all in, set it up, all that stuff. Hopefully it's not going to be too difficult because setting up electronics is not my strong point. I normally get eight Steve in, but eight Steve doesn't do helicopters. So I guess I'm lumbered with having to try and figure it out for myself. Wish me luck. All oh, right, so I've done a little bit of cable tidying up around here, still not finished yet. So I've plugged it into the computer. I've just got the MSH brain setup software on there. I've got to mess about with it. I'm just putting in the details there. We're going to carry on with that in a minute. So next, we're going to open the DX8 transmitter and see what it's all about. I've got the old one, which is here, which is the one I used to use when I flew model helicopters back in the day. But it's a little bit outdated now. This one's DSM-2. The new one is DSM-X. And here it is compared to the older one. Oh, right, so I've nearly finished setting it all up. All the controls work, so we've got the up and down. No idea why I was making that annoying beeping noise. We've got the tail and the cyclic. But the only thing so far that I can't get to work is the governor. So when we're in the governor menu here on the setup program, it's supposed to, once you've got the magnets here, there's a couple of magnets here inside the clutch, once they align with the sensor, this little magnet detected little box here is supposed to light up and mine isn't. So I'm wondering if it's because I used that different connector. I cut the connector off of the original sensor and soldered in a connector to work with this one. I'm not sure if that's why it's not working. So I went over to the forum Heli Freaks and asked the lovely bunch on there. So then once we've got that working, I'm just going to have to tidy up all this spaghetti junction. Boom, it works, job done. 
So a massive thanks to Brain Dev for putting me out of my misery. Basically, I just had to swap the red and the black wire over the other way around, and now it works. So I could still do with getting like a swashplate leveling tool that gets it perfectly flat. I set my zero pitch by folding both blades in like that with the stick in the middle position. And then maximum and minimum pitch, I haven't got a clue. A lot of people get really funny with figures. They want to know exactly what it is. I personally don't really care what the pitch is. I fly it. Um, if I do a flat out climb and it bogs too much, I'll lower the pitch down. And if I do a flat out climb and it doesn't bog at all, then I can put the pitch up a little bit. So I'll just sort of tune it to how I like it, not to a figure. So next, we're just going to sort out all this spaghetti junction here. And then I'll show you when that's all done. Boom! There we go. So it's not the neatest of jobs. I could probably do shortening some of these cables. Uh, but for now, that's going to work. I can test fly it. I can try it out. So that's all we've got time for for this video. In the next video, we're going to start it up. We're going to run it. We're going to run it in. We're going to take it out for a little fly. Hopefully not break it. So if you don't want to miss that, make sure you subscribe. Smash the bell button to stay notified. Give us a thumbs up if you like the video. Thumbs down if you suck. And for now, um, I will see you over on one of these other videos. Helicopter videos coming up very soon. Bye. <laughs>